From Wenham, a suburb of Boston, comes an eyewitness account which could explain this continued military fascination with flying saucers. Ray Fowler, one of the most respected civilian UFO investigators, is also author of two bestsellers in the field. Because of his stint in the Air Force Security Service, he finds himself still vulnerable to government pressure. I work for a company that uh, designed and built a, a major weapon system. And because of connections within the company, because of connections with Dr. Jalen Hynek, who was an Air Force investigator for, for many years, uh, I came across information that indicated that this major weapon system, as well as others, had been disrupted by UFOs. And uh, I gave a story to a national newspaper, the Christian Science Monitor, uh, which published this story. Uh, within an hour after this particular paper was out, the Strategic Air Command had called my company. And the following day, the Pentagon called the company and threatened to send a letter of displeasure to the company if uh, something wasn't done about my uh, making these things public. Because of similar pressures in his own work, a friend of Ray's had kept quiet for 27 years with an amazing story. Ray tried to convince the friend to tell his story on In Search Of. I know it's been several days now, and I've been waiting for you to call me on this, but uh, have you come to any conclusions? The man finally agreed, for the first time, to talk, but only under strict conditions. Uh, I can assure you that uh, your name will not be used. They made up a name, Fritz, to protect the witness's true identity. And I think the best place to do it probably would be in my planetarium away from the kids and the telephone and things like that. Waiting for his friend to arrive, Ray nervously fiddled with his telescopes. He remembered his extensive investigations into the man's reliability as a witness. In the case of Fritz, I started in 1973, went all the way back through the various companies he worked for, right back to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, talked to people he worked with, and they all gave him a very clean build of health, a reputable man, honest man, not the type that would uh, fabricate a hoax and a very efficient uh, engineer manager. As the man arrived, Ray recalled the years his friend had wavered about breaking an oath of secrecy. He recalled their long arguments about a greater public good. Would the years of patient persuasion at last pay off? As I understand it, Fritz, uh, you were working for the United States Air Force. Uh, the story began late one night in 1953 at Frenchman's Flat, Nevada. The man had been working as a consultant on blast effects of atom bombs when he was suddenly ordered to report for a new mission. What happened after that? We were put on a... Um a bus which the windows were all completely covered with curtains and in some cases uh, black paper taped to the windows and uh, were driven for three or four hours and we're not sure just where we were going. Uh, several of us tried to uh, guess where we might have been. Uh, we uh, at that time came to the conclusion it was in the area of Kingman, Arizona. After getting off the bus as recreated here, the scientists were taken to an even more remote location. They had no idea exactly where they were or what they were about to see. We were told that we had been selected for various technical specialties. And I was told that I was to ask any questions that had to do with dynamic loads and nothing more, and I wouldn't be, get any answers to any other questions. It looked like two saucers, I would call it, uh, one on top of the other, inverted, probably 25 to 30 feet in diameter. In terms of something known, what kind of metal would it look like? Well, it would look like a brushed aluminum. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure it probably wasn't that. I say that uh, because I noticed no scratch marks. Mm -hmm. And anything that it would penetrate into the sand 20 inches that way would certainly have some scratch marks. No signs of buckling, fracture, or anything? Not that I could see. I accepted it was probably some United States government uh, vehicle, a highly classified vehicle. In fact, we were told that that's what it was. Interestingly enough, one of the questions I needed to know was what the mass of the vehicle was. Well, I can tell a lot of things from the penetration into the desert sand and so forth, but I needed to know the mass. And they told me that they weren't going to let me know that. I, I, they perhaps didn't even know themselves. There was also a tent, which... Uh, I didn't get to look into, but a 
one fellow whom I did happen to talk with briefly until they told us to stop talking, uh, said that he had seen two bodies inside this tent, two alien-looking bodies. It was brown, leathery skin, it had a silver, like a cap on, without a bill. Like a skull cap? Yes, like a yeah. skull cap. I realized what this really started to mean, but I also at the same time realized probably why the government was keeping it classified. There are a lot of things that could uh, be changed by our culture or religions. There are a lot of things that could be affected by the release of information like that at that particular time. Like many other UFO stories, this also concludes with the recovered craft taken to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Colonel Robert Friend, former head of Project Blue Book. There were, in uh, lots of instances, cases that had potential scientific pay dirt that possibly should have been pursued further. And in that regard, yes, uh, I think that some of the cases had a lot of promise. The Roswell case and the strange story of the man known as Fritz are two dramatic examples of close encounters of the fourth kind. My major criticism is that uh, from way back in the 1947s, there should have been a gradual in information uh, release and uh, have the uh, public uh, accustomed to, to what UFOs are, what we're trying to do about them. Uh, and instead, they've covered up so long that to admit that they've covered it up, it's almost like another Watergate, um, plus the fact uh, I think they don't have the answers. And if they admitted even what they knew, people would want to know more answers. They don't have the answers to give them. I'm sure they don't have the answers to give them.